everyone, welcome back to GameSpot. I am Mike. I am here with the creative director at Cappy. This is Chris Piotrowski. And you yeah. just as of like right before we started recording announced a release date for the game. Yes, yeah, it's coming out next week on the 14th. Yep. And uh, we just announced a trailer and so it's been a long time coming and I'm feeling a little bit nervous and answer crawling all over my body. <laughs> it's been uh, over five years, right? Yeah, it's been over five years. Yes, uh, you know, there's a little bit of time before that as well in prototyping and sort of the early stages of the game. Yeah. Um, and, but uh, yeah, it's been, it's, been a, it's been a long haul for sure. Cool. So it's yeah. nice to have it uh, coming together now. And um, yeah, looking forward to the release, even though I am personally uh, going through an emotional turmoil. <laughs> Well, hopefully that shakes out well, but uh, yeah. I'm, just, I'm glad you brought the game in. Uh, so we've got the game. We kind of skipped over, you said like a four minute-ish intro starting from the beach. Yeah, so the beginning, uh, we just sort of skipped the, 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 the kind of uh, intro moments um, just because it's, it's a nice little sailing sequence that probably plays better in your living room in the middle of the night sure. than, than it does on a Twitch stream when you want to see some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, we're beginning the game almost at the beginning. Um, this is the south shore of the island uh, that, where the game, whole game takes place inside the subterranean depths of this world. Okay. Um, so it's, it's just a little bit past the beginning. Um, gotcha. And so, yeah, like you've shown the game a lot throughout the past five years in varying states um, of completion or lack thereof. But um, for those who don't know, what's like the elevator pitch for Below? Uh, Below is uh, sort of like a combination of um, uh, roguelike sort of dungeon crawling uh, mixed with a, a little bit of like a, a Zelda style adventure game, adventure world design. Okay. So it's not 100% uh, procedurally generated. It has uh, randomly generated dungeons that kind of interconnect into like little pockets of uh, handcrafted um, little spaces that you can find and discover okay. um, that are found within those randomly generated uh, moments. Um, <clears throat> uh, I've also described it, I mean, we, we were sort of, our little tagline is a solitary journey through the haunted depths of a forbidden isle. There you go. So that's the game, that's that the elevator pitch. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But, yeah, but as far as the kind of game that it is, uh, it heavily uh, uh, leans on um, roguelikes, Although I guess I should probably call it a roguelike like before a bunch of people on the <laughs> internet get very angry. Rogue fans are very I've been hardcore. There. Well, I've been um, on the receiving end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've not been one of those people. Um, but yeah, as far as the, the, the structure of the game goes, it's um, um, it's not completely randomly generated. It's sort of like if you imagine a game like Minecraft, where every time you play, you get a new seed, and there's a whole new world for you to explore that mm -hmm. you know has a whole different flow. This game is uh, is randomly generated in the sort of way that a game like Diablo or uh, or Spelunky is, where okay. um, you know the, the game has a very specific sort of layer cake structure of zones sure. with, with levels and stuff like that. And all those levels are are, are, are randomized, but um, but you will pass through sort of the same layer cake as you go. Okay. But the the structure of it, um, like the the inner details of it, are are uh, are brand new every time you die. Gotcha. And I was yeah. gonna say like. Spelunky is one of those that comes to mind just because literally you're going from the surface deeper throughout yes, the game, yeah, at yeah, least throughout yeah, for what yeah. I've seen of Below. Um, as well, I guess it's, as well as like Rogue itself, the exactly, original yeah, one. Exactly, it's, it's, it's a totally classic structure. Yeah. Diablo has the same thing. It's like, go down sure. until you meet the baddie. Yep. Um, so that's your, and, you said that's like a lantern. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what I'm, uh, just to sort of mention what I'm, what I'm doing right now, at the beginning of the game you find this object called uh, the lantern. And the lantern is sort of the game's, uh, it's the main sort of quest item. So I kind of describe it as um, Below's uh, Ocarina of Time in that the, the whole game is sort of built around um, this magical object called the lantern that okay. you find at the very surface of the aisle. Gotcha. Um, and uh, one of the kind of big ideas in the game, um, how it all sort of interconnects, is um, every single time you die in, in, in Below, you start as a brand new wanderer arriving on the islands um, uh, after the previous wanderer's life. So the game world itself, the progress that you make in it is, is, uh, is persistent, but uh, the lives themselves are, are fleeting and, and, and short and, uh, and fragile. Um, so the game really isn't necessarily about having one character that becomes more powerful and 
uh, you know, becomes kind of like the, the, a monster killing machine, but it's really about uh, making a little bit of progress uh, with each life and building uh, on top of that. Okay. Um, the one thing about it, though, is that the lantern itself um, is a, a specific, unique um, item in the game. Um, and uh, I describe it as sort of like the guiding light for the player. Um, it's also, it, the way it works is that if you, um, if you go into the world with one wanderer who has the lantern and they die, um, the lantern uh, is dropped at their corpse. Um, and the only way to retrieve the lantern is to just to, to fight your way back to it. Okay. So the game kind of goes back and forth between um, these two modes where you know, at some at one moment you do have this lantern and it's it's helpful. It provides light. It uh, um, uh, it illuminates uh, important details. It helps you uh, uh, recognize traps and, okay. and dangers and things like that. And then uh, inevitably you lose that lantern. You have to go back into the world um, without it. And then that's when uh, the systems that are built around like crafting torches and other sources of light. Um, becomes super important. Okay. So the game, when, when you have the lantern, the game's a little bit safer, a little bit um, easier to play, um, and is sort of like giving you just a little bit more information. Um, but at some point, you do lose that guiding light, and uh, um, if there's a hard journey to get back to it. Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's kind of like the the baton that's shared between lives, right. um, and every character's. Is trying to, uh, or every wanderer is trying to, just get back to that that lantern and take it deeper and deeper into the game world. Right. Um, so from what I played the game and from what I've kind of become known for, it doesn't seem to hold your hand much. Um, you know, it's very much up to us to figure out what we're doing, where we're going. Kind of. Um, it's not very. I mean, I don't. Maybe there was stuff in the beginning, but I don't think there was, like, in terms of tutorials. You're kind of learning as you go, right? There really is no tutorials in the game. We have some little things that, like, at the beginning, we kind of, you know, we show you, like, hey, this is the button that makes the lantern glow. Okay. Um, and, like, little hints like that, but beyond that, um, the game is really uh, designed uh, to be kind of, like, a, a, a closed puzzle box. Sure. Uh, my, my hope is that... Uh, I kind of feel like humans are, are take a lot of pleasure and, and you know the, the human mind is really uh, good at recognizing patterns and, and figuring out systems. It's something that I think gamers kind of do inherently. Yeah. Um, and I know I'm, kind of, I'm interested in the idea of, of, of giving players a game where it says nothing. Yeah. Um, and the whole thing is just like a big giant puzzle box that you need to. Uh, figure out how to unlock uh, as you go. Um, and I, there is something scary about that idea, obviously, because I think uh, players these days are kind of, um, a lot of games do hold hands quite a bit. And I, I'm not knocking that in any way. I think that's totally great. I play those games and love them. Um, but, uh, but I think there's, there's room. Um, uh, I think there's, there are players who, uh, who are looking for and um, and would appreciate something that's a little bit quieter and sort of says, "Hey, this is on you. You're on your own here." Sure. Um, uh, I've always found that when I, I when I demo this game at PAX and stuff like that, if I mentioned like, "Hey, the game has no hints and has no no dialogue and no text," uh, that players sort of go like, "Okay," and then they just sort of lean into the game and try to figure it out. Um, How sick are you of Dark Souls comparisons? Oh, I'm not sick of it at all. At all. I, I, I think like Dark Souls, the entire Dark Souls series came out during this development, uh, which is really crazy to think about. <laughs> <laughs> that is very nuts. Yeah, uh, but uh, but uh, no, I think I think that Dark Souls is is a really interesting. Like, I don't think Below has. Uh, I don't think that Below is Below hasn't been designed to be as um, as as difficult when it comes to uh, combat and stuff like that. Right. But I think the approach that Dark Souls had, where it sort of you know, confidently let players loose in the world, um, and then you know knew that they're going to learn through trial and error and through dying quite a bit, and just uh, and you know being kind of confident to, to create a design like that. Uh, it's interesting because like one of the things is that like D Dark Souls structure um, and game design is one of the reasons why that game found such a uh, such a 
amazing community, mm -hmm. right? People immediately, when the game came out, began to talk to each other, like, where is this? How do you get that? What's the best way to do this? Where is this piece of armor? Um, and all that information came from the community, not from you know, the game itself, uh, just sort of telling you, hey, your thing's over there, this is where the thing is. Um, it just, it's a game that where everything's just there, it's sitting there for you to try to um, you know, figure out how to get there and, and just discover things through exploration. So is that like um, at the forefront of your minds when you were creating Below as far as kind of creating something that people, people would talk about and share and uh, discover things in that kind of yeah, old school way? Yeah, I think dark, well, the nice thing about Dark Souls is that yeah, it did, it did give us a bit of confidence in the idea that you can make a game that has like a, a that's very difficult and very, uh, very dense in mechanics and, uh, and then just let players, like knowing that players will work together and, and, and that kind of thing does engage players in that way where you know somebody finds something and then they go on a forum and share it um, and then eventually like you know people start playing with the Wikipedia up <laughs> and stuff like that like when I play Don't Starve or like when I play uh, Minecraft I remember like early on just having like the player made like the fan wiki and, uh, and learning from that um, so there's something there's definitely something uh, in below that uh, you know we, we designed it kind of intentionally to uh, to try to capture that where really you don't know anything uh, aside from the game's called below and, you, and you're going down yeah, yeah. <laughs> go down try to go as far down as you can um, but outside from that the mechanics the uh, you know the theme of the game narrative um, it's all kind of just a little secret, sure. Um, but I, I do assume that you know day one. Uh, sorry, I almost died there. <laughs> I like the overhead uh, vertical jump attack. Reminds me of the uh, Z targeting A attack from Ocarina. Uh, yeah, the combat was inspired uh, not not necessarily by Dark Souls, but uh, by uh, by Wind Waker. Okay. Uh, for me, Wind Waker is like the the pinnacle of fun feeling, snappy sort of. Uh, technical combat that has like a nice uh, playful feel to it that makes you feel like a little, like Link in Wind, in Wind Waker feels like a little ninja that can do little backflips <laughs> and every little move is is just right. Right up until he stabs uh, Ganon right in the forehead. <laughs> oh, that is one of the yeah. greatest things in the world. It was. Um, but yeah, I can definitely see Wind Waker in this. Yeah, so the move set that you have uh, in combat is, is very similar to, uh, to Wind Waker. You've got like a little, uh, like a regular hit, you can pull your shield and stab around like this. Um, the, sword, the, the shield can be uh, moved around, but if you don't touch the R stick, you can strafe. Okay. Um, there's a little uh, shield uh, bash. Uh, there's like a running lunge and a couple of little, there's like a, a dodge roll as well. Um, wow. um, so the sword and shield is, is very much like uh, the bread and butter of the game. Uh, but then outside from that, you do have uh, a, a bow with a bunch of arrows that you can craft. Um, and, uh, and throughout the game, you do find armor and, and uh, masks and, um, uh, and two-handed weapons. Um, but yeah, the, the combat ha was very much influenced by, by the feel of, of Wind Waker, where it has that kind of, like for me, Wind Waker is like a more playful, uh, easier to, to get into version of like all the same moves that Dark Souls has, kind of. Right. Um, so that's that's been my influence. Zelda for me is my one true love. I'm doing a little bit of crafting here. So I, uh, in between, I just finished the first level of the game, and in between levels, there's these little quiet spaces for you to uh, uh, to sort of take the resources that you found in the game and um, and convert them into soups or potions, or uh, take the materials and turn them into tools like. Uh, torch or bandage and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so in between each level, there's like a little bit of prep, basically. Um, and the other thing is that the fire pits uh, can be used uh, if you spend crystals, which are in the top right corner. Gotcha. Um, uh, you can use them to mark a fire pit for a, a shortcut. Okay. Um, so and it's just it's not like it's not a permanent one. It's just it's like a, it's one saving grace, basically. Uh, so for example, if I right now go into the next level and die. Because I, uh, I mark that that fire, um, uh, the next life will be able to teleport there from any fire. Gotcha. Um, the but next then, it, but it's just like a one one. It's a one time use sort of thing. Okay. 
Um, so it's sort of like one chance to get back to your corpse, one chance to get back to your right. uh, uh, your lantern uh, before you have to do it from the top to the bottom again. So the one-time use kind of makes it a risk-reward where, I mean, obviously, if you can get farther in without using it, you can use it farther into the dungeon and then warp there the next time? Yes, yeah, you can, gotcha. you can warp there. Yeah, any, 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 yeah, as you're progressing, you can mark, as long as you have the, the gems for it. Right. Uh, you can uh, you can set up those little shortcuts. There's other there's physical shortcuts in the game as well. So as you play, uh, I'll, sh I'll show that ho hopefully uh, if I can survive. Um, but as you play uh, and and you know make your way through the, through the world and get deeper into it, um, you do inevitably find little ways back. You're you're always constantly poking holes back up to the surface of the islands. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, the island initially begins as sort of like you know it has only one path into the world, um, but very quickly if you if you're sort of exploring around you'll find uh, little little ways to to pop little holes back in, open up little doorways that that were hidden, uh, and then eventually throughout the game the, the island surface becomes just like a multi-path uh, nexus for the for the for the game world. Okay. Um, uh, little foxes. Th those enemies they're like. They like crystallized, or, or is that just like kind of the art direction you're going for? Like, I see a few right These here ones the there? Yeah, 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 yeah. These, this is sort of, this is sort of like the main faction of enemies uh, in the game. And uh, when you, uh, if you attack them, they, uh, they're the main source of for the lantern, uh, the lantern. So these little gems that you see that they drop, um, that's the fuel for the lantern. Okay. Um, and the lantern uh, burns fuel by just having it on, like I have right now. But it it burns a little bit more fuel when you use the lantern beam. Okay. Uh, and the lantern beam can be used to push away the kind of fog of war here. Gotcha. Uh, it also has other uses as well, um, just for uh, like it's a it's a magical device that has a whole bunch of little functions in the game. Right. Um, it also reveals uh, traps with those little red glyphs like that. Um, so when you do lose the lantern, for example, like this, that little detail there, um, that red glyph is something that, when you come back into the world without it, that's what the trap looks like. <laughs> oh, okay. With it, it looks like that. Okay, I was just gonna ask, like, well, without it, not... it looks like that. <laughs> so those are the two. Please th keep that on. Those were the those are the two different changes in difficulty as you yeah. learn, uh, or as you uh, lose the lantern and, and get back to it. So what are some, obviously, I'm, obviously this is a loaded question because like, you guys have been working on the game on and off for five years, right? Um, yeah. But what are some of the major changes you've made in the home stretch? Or, uh, or like say like since, I think I was telling you, 2015 was the last time I saw the game? Yeah, that makes um, sense. At PAX or something. And um, I'm curious, like, are there any major changes you made to the formula? Has it, had, has it been largely the same since you, uh, you started? Uh, the formula has been the same. Whoa. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> you did it on purpose so we could see how the death works. I actually died fumbling with my inventory, so <laughs> it, uh, bad form, but hey. Uh, you shouldn't, so here's a pro tip, you should not use the backpack um, unless you're safe, uh, because the game doesn't pause anything. Okay. Um, so um, it's definitely good to do all your, you know, backpack crafting and all that kind of stuff when you've retreated into some sort of safe zone. Right. But this gives me an opportunity to show off the the way the checkpoints work. Cool. Um, and dying in this game is par for the course. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, right, you lowered that bridge last time, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, I could use this, uh, I'm gonna use this just to kind of get a little bit more resources, but then I'll uh, teleport from the next fire. Okay. Um, Jim Guthrie, who did the music for Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery and Planet Coaster and uh, um, Reigns Her Majesty mm -hmm. and, and a bunch of other games, um, also did uh, the music for this game as well. It's great. Um, so you heard that little little return to island ditty there. Um, was, when you were at a campfire earlier crafting, was that, it sounded like, maybe I was imagining it, maybe it was just the soundtrack playing, but it seemed like when you were Combining items, there was like a reactive kind of music. Um, yeah, there's the, yeah, that, that's a good catch. Yeah, there's a little there's a little musical hint system. Uh, I don't know if I have any items that I can show this off with right now. I actually don't, but I don't have the items that that okay. with this. But uh, when I get some, I can do that. But yeah, there's there's a little bit of uh, like there's a couple little notes that that if you're crafting, um, uh, it kind of hints to you. 
that you're on the right track or you're not on the right track. Okay. Um, I'm gonna use the return to shortcut. Uh, so let's bring you to that one on those uh, zigzagging stairs. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. I had a weird sit there. Um, so yeah, the shortcuts are just one one use. So basically I have like one one easy chance, and it's never quite easy, but an, uh, one easier shot to uh, return to the uh, uh, the corpse of the previous wanderer. Okay. Um, and to retrieve the uh, the lantern, uh, and if I if I mess up here, then I'm just back to back to the top, and I, I have to. Uh, okay. So I can check my map here, and it shows me that my lantern is a little bit over to the right. Okay. That little red dot there. Right. Um, and there's a corpse as well. So you can use the mini map to uh, um, to track whether uh, you know where the items are that you're looking for. She said, "You say you screw up here, you won't. You'll go back to the beginning, and then you won't have the shortcut, right?" Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But any physical shortcuts you open up, um, right? Like the bridge will still be exactly. Lower. Yeah. So, okay. so in this level, there's also another little hidden shortcut. So, if I manage to open that, I'll be able to retrieve uh, to to return to here pretty quickly. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, the game does still have kind of like a hardcore roguelike. Uh, rule set. So, um, when these sort of helpful shortcuts ever go away, you you do end up kind of back at the top. Um, and the lantern never moves. It's something that um, is permanently in in the place that it's, that uh, that you dropped it. Sure. So, the thing about that is that the game ends up being um, ends up sort of very uh, naturally um, becoming harder and harder because if you get really deep into the game world um, and lose the lantern. Oh, oh my goodness. <sighs> Tell me after you kill these guys. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys yeah. later. <laughs> is, that a, is that a trap right there, that rope? Uh, that's, that's a very early trap. Yeah, it's just sort of like intro to trap. So if you run across this little trip trap, uh, it trips you, and oh, okay, it gets gotcha. like if there's enemies around, you'll you'll pay for it. Yeah. Uh, you can also cut it with a little slash attack. Oh, then you get broke um, too. Okay. Uh, so it's just kind of like a non-lethal. Hey, there's traps, and you should watch out for them. Um, and then after that, we sort of start nailing you with the lethal stuff, such as that. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to get. You can also use traps against enemies, which is what just happened there. I'm not sure if it was yeah, yeah. noticeable, but that when when I attacked that enemy, it dodged into a trap. Okay. Um, So the bot, the corpse is in this area, right? I yeah, believe. See, I think the corpse and the lantern are here. Yeah. Okay. These little fire pits, or these little fire pillars, right here, um, they provide a little bit of light, um, which is important. The game does get darker and darker as you get deeper. It gets colder as well. It gets more devoid of resources as it gets deeper. So this little cave area. With, you know, growing grass, and and uh, so this is the corpse that you, when you get to your corpse, you can uh, pick up the lantern. Okay. Um, You're giving me all these achievements. Thank you so much. Oh yeah. And uh, you can also pick up all of your loot as well. Okay. But you only have one shot to do that. So after one attempt, the corpse disappears and all of its loot disappears as well. But the lantern itself stays uh, permanently. The lantern will always be here until yes, you retrieve until it. Until you pick it up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So but, that's yeah, so the way to think about it is that it's it is it is kind of like a little baton that that you're trying to right. pick up and take further. But like to your earlier point, if you get super deep into the dungeon, the lantern is going to be very far down, so the game's going to be harder because you have to get that far without the dungeon or without the lantern. Without the lantern, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of different mechanics for for lights. Like there's obviously the torch. There's a couple um, uh, pieces of gear that also generate light. Uh, but also, if you don't have any light at all, you can just drop your crystals. On the ground and sort of like just tippy toe your way through the game, okay. but if you notice, I also when I kill enemies, they drop light as well. Right. So if I don't pick up, so right now I'm not using any of my own light source. Okay. Um, but just by not picking up the, the collectibles, yeah. I can I can whoa die super fast. Um, um, yeah, just by not picking up the collectibles, you can sort of uh, illuminate the environment. That's a really nice touch as well. Like that a lot. Um, so the nice thing about that is that really deep into the game, if you are looking for the lantern, you can also pick up the ones that you dropped as well. Mm -hmm. 
But if, for example, like if I don't have lantern, I don't have a torch or anything like that, I could still kind of go like, you know. Okay. And then maybe to illuminate traps. Yeah, et maybe like aggro one of these guys into my little light zone. He's not He's falling not for it. <laughs> and I'll just kill him. Yeah. Brute <laughs> force. Uh, if, the, if the arrows land anywhere on the actual level, you can pick them back up. Okay. So, um, and the arrows are, are craftable. There's a whole bunch of different kinds. There's bombs and flares and things like that. Uh, so the bone arrow and and uh, and the sword and shield are um, are the kind of core, you know. Um, and then around that, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of um, gear and loot and stuff like that to help you out. And so you were saying, of, of course, uh, Cappy has released other stuff throughout these five years, obviously. It was uh, Super Time Force. Yep. Um, you worked on the Don't Starve, uh, I'm forgetting the name right now. Uh, Don't Starve Shipwrecked. Shipwrecked, yes. Yeah. Um, so you've been busy, uh, to say the least. Yeah, I mean, I've been primarily focused on, on this. Yeah. I, um, I helped with... Um, uh, with Super Time Force, uh, especially at the ending um, of the project. Um, Don't Starve and OKKO OK were uh, primarily made by um, a separate team. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, thanks to those projects, this project was able to stay in the oven a little bit longer. Cool. Um, so that's generally how, we, how we've operated the studio. Um, we've always sort of had a couple projects on the go. Um, and one, you know, there's always like one project that's the Cappy project, and um, or like I mean, a, an original project. Uh, and then every once in a while, if we need it, we we do kind of uh, like Don't Stop was a really great opportunity. OKKO okay, was an awesome opportunity yeah. that came to us as well. Um, so if if it comes along, if, if those things come along, um, uh, every once in a while we do. Um, uh, and entertain working on uh, contract work. Um, so you, did you work with Clay much, or was it like, did they kind of just hand off Don't Starve to you for the, like in, in its entirety um, to say, hey, yeah, this is yours? Yeah, Don't Starve Shipwreck was interesting because they, they, they gave us sort of free reign in terms of uh, theming the game. And um, uh, so the whole concept, the Shipwreck concept and the sort of mechanics in that uh, was Pitched to Clay and uh, and uh, and designed by by Cappy. Okay. Um, so we we came up with the idea and sort of the the, the concepts behind it and um, and then they, they let us uh, roll with it. Cool. Um, yeah. So it was, it was a really uh, really good positive project for us. Um, there's some things you know that we learned on that project that um, overlap with this project a little bit. Um, because um, this does have a little bit of survival. It's, it's no, it's, this isn't a game that has like, you know, extensive, like endless crafting list or anything like that. The crafting is really just sort of a support system. Right. Um, so I'm just opening up another little shortcut here. Yeah, I'm um, really interested to, to see how like, I mean, I can already kind of see, like you said, like I can see the Don't Starve influence on this and vice versa, uh, Shipwrecked, but it's, it'd be interesting to see Kind of how those different projects might have fed into this throughout its lifespan, uh, development lifespan. Um, the this game was was you know midway through its its development when we started working on Don't Starve, so the influence right. is very minimal. Okay. Uh, if anything, I would say the concept of shipwrecked is taken from this game. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, as a little through, like they're both like thematically similar t to this. Like, um, what was that? Oh, sorry. Um, but uh, but yeah, the way it sort of helped us is you know if you ever spend time balancing a, um, a survival game, it kind of uh, it just helps you think about the right things and know, right, know what yeah. to be aware of and, and know what to worry about. No, I've got no crafting opportunities here. So is that floor key to the next floor down? Uh, yeah, so okay. uh, the game's kind of structured, like some of the structure is very, very, very classic. Um, every floor 
it has a, a key that you need to find and it has a, the, the door to the next uh, level. And then within that level, there's also little um, secret areas. Um, but in order to sort of progress downwards, you do have to sort of explore enough of the world uh, to find the key and then to find the doorway. Um, those are just kind of like the, the very fundamental goals on each level. Sure. Find key, find an exit kind of thing. And then built around that are just a whole bunch of weird little mechanics. Okay. Is there any like lore behind the relationship between the separate wanders or is it just like an island that draws people to it? Um, there is a lot of background lore just in terms of my own sort of uh, world building and things like that. Yeah. Um, but that's exactly how I would describe it, actually. Okay. Like, the, you know, one of the sort of concepts in the game is, at least for, for, for me, the <clears throat> idea behind these wanderers appearing on the island. Um, I've always sort of thought about it as like moths to a flame kind of thing. Okay. Um, where in this world there's this island in the middle of the ocean that's guarded by these standing stones. And um, some of its energy seeps out and afflicts wanderers and draws them in. Okay. Um, that's the concept. Gotcha. <laughs> Narratively. It's a very, uh, like, that's, but that's never expressed right. inherently in the game. From it's, there, it's pretty minimal. It's just, the game like, yeah, it's just sort of some, some humans are drawn to this island uh, for one reason or another. Right. And, uh, and that's pretty much all you know. Ah, oh, there you go. Did he just try to attack you and then got you baited him into the? Yeah, trap? I sort of just like knew he was going to attack okay. uh, in my direction and, and and baited him into the trap. It's like you made this game. Yeah, it's almost like I knew exactly what he was going to do. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I'm just kidding. You're you're, you're skilled. <laughs> I mean, knowledge is is, is skill. Yeah. Right? So if you play the game enough, you can get a sense for it, like any other game. Sure. Um, and understand the timings of things and how to take advantage of certain things. I would suggest that players play the game um, slowly and carefully. Yeah. Uh, if you were to run into, you know, like a, a crowd of, uh, of, of enemies, um, you're always only a couple of hits from being uh, completely annihilated. Yeah. Um, and the game has a bleeding mechanic, so when you do take a hit, um, unless you can fix that with, uh, with a, you know, a craftable uh, band-aid, or bandage, I always make that mistake. Um, I like that, it's like a Band-Aid logo in the menus though, right? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. nice. Yeah, little, little modern uh, touch. Yeah. Um, stylistic stuff. Um, but yeah, if when you get hit, you do start to bleed, and so there's a couple, bunch of different ways that you can solve that. Um, you can craft, um, you can craft uh, items um, and uh, you can also uh, uh, cauterize your wounds with fire as okay. well, uh, Rambo styles. Um, I'm into it. Yeah. It's a very lonely game. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think that's, that's one thing I'm kind of happy with, though. I think there's like a certain feeling in the game that. Um, um, that it, it, I think it captures pretty well. Right. Uh, how are we doing for time? Um, Want to go like another five minutes? Something like that, or? Uh, sure. Or is there something you don't want to show yet? I kind of don't want to show this. Okay, cool. no, that's, that's completely <laughs> but fine. I could, I could go into a different area, or I can just um, play a little bit longer. I can just like continue. Sure, yeah, maybe like a couple more minutes. Yeah, um, so I- Definitely show us a good chunk, though. Yeah, um, I'm not going to go this way, okay. but- uh, cool. Uh, um, there's one more area here that I that I could try to get to. I imagine it must be weird slash tough demoing this game because of how much, maybe not how much it relies on, but because of how much it's centered on letting the player figure it out. I almost, if I was you, I wouldn't want to, like I also wouldn't want to show too much. Yeah, I find that every time I'm, I'm saying, like I'm mentioning even details about like how the lantern works and all that kind of stuff, those are all the kinds of details that I hope players will just yeah. um, figure out um, on their own over time just through experimentation or through community yeah. help and that kind of stuff. 
So um, I feel like it's one of those games where like people say, like, oh, I wish I could go back, like erase my memory of Dark Souls and go back and play it again for the first time, or some, uh, like even Ocarina, like before you discovered all those secrets yeah, that you, you can't out. forget no matter how hard you try. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I, uh, I recently played, uh, well, I played Breath of the Wild when it first came out. Yeah. And it was just such a delight to go through that world yeah. without anything about it. I almost always want to play that game. Yeah, I played that game without any uh, quick travel or any UI or anything. Yeah. So I played it for like 400 hours or something <laughs> like yeah. that. Something really insane. You get along with uh, Rob, our video producer here, or our <laughs> video manager. He has put a lot of time into that as well. Well, I guess we all have, but some of you guys have put equal amounts. Yeah, I completely fell in love with that game, um, and it was just really nice, yeah, to to experience that kind of like you know fresh Zelda world. There's nothing quite like it. It's fascinating because I feel like in the time you've been making this game, like several, like including Breath of the Wild, and even to some extent like Red Dead Redemption Two, have kind of gone for that survival, maybe not survival focus, but definitely have heavy survival elements. Um, and it seems like a lot, it's funny to see like big AAA developers going for that now as well. Yeah, I think a lot of the ideas that we sort of started out with uh, have over the years uh, become quite uh, prevalent. Um, but I think that's, that's good, it just, that kind of, it just means that people when they approach this game fresh and... and woo. Oh wow. Did he just spawn a little smaller one? Or no, that guy out? came from, oh, okay, from above. Gotcha. He was sort of crawling in there slowly. Right. Whoop. Whoop. Oh, there Whoop. they are. <laughs> I'm pretty good at this game. Yeah. Good okay. nice job. Ooh, I'm actually, I didn't notice I was starting. What, what, oh, I so see, up, yeah, up the there, stomach. So up there, there's uh, a little, uh, like in the top left corner, there's the, the survival interface. Okay. So the way that works is that there's a top uh, element, which is the heart, and the heart is your HP, which is basically represents like a, a bottle full of blood, basically. If you get okay. hit, it drains uh, blood. And then tethered to that is hunger, uh, temperature, and thirst. Okay. So if any of those uh, stats go down, then it begins to drain on the heart. Okay. Um, and soup, for example, just basic soup uh, will heal, um, will give you a little bit of uh, temperature, like it'll warm okay. you up a bit. It gives you a little bit of everything. Sure. But then within that crafting system, there's, you can create stew, which is a little bit more uh, towards hunger, uh, or uh, if you, like if you cook with more meats, that's what, that's what you get. If you cook with more vegetables, you get broth. Okay. Um, but then within that also, there's magic mushrooms and things like that, uh, which is the, the, the way that you craft um, buff elixirs. Okay. Um, and yeah, cool. That's sort of how the that that system works. Whoop. Well, how about after this crowd, we can call it a call it a video. Or there you go. <laughs> That's a good way to end it. <laughs> Maybe that lantern later. Cool. Well, so we finally have a release date for Below from Cappy. Chris Piotrowski, and it is December 14th, Xbox One PC? Yes, it's coming out for Xbox awesome. One PC. It's coming out for Xbox X. Uh, there's like a nice 4K build. Cool. Uh, and the game looks super delicious in 4K. I was gonna say, it looks amazing um, right now, too. Because it has like the nice, the, the small art style. Uh, we obviously, we started this game before 4K existed, so. Oh, right, yeah. One of the few benefits of working on a game for a really long time is that new TV technology is sure, invented. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And for a game that's really, you know, small scale, uh, it looks delicious in in, uh, in in 1080p as well, like it's nice and crisp. But awesome. when you do see it in 4K, it's like the little character's peg legs are are like uh, you know super noticeable, and the blades of grass look sharp enough sure. to to shave with. And cool. Um, there's a nice unintentional benefit. It's almost like we we intentionally made a game for 4K without <laughs> without <laughs> that actually I won't playing for it. Didn't. <laughs> But uh, Chris, thank you so much for stopping by My and pleasure. showing us below. Uh, it comes out next week. Finally, we'll all get to play it. Uh, if you were watching this, thanks so much for joining us. You can go get below on December 14th on Xbox One, Xbox One X, and PC. Uh, I highly recommend it from everything I've seen. And uh, we'll see you around GameSpot.